Right, take a pub. This is the railway in in Mells, again in Wirral. Mells is an old Viking name meaning sand hills, and it's one of the seaports the Vikings used to use in the Irish Sea in the 9th and 10th centuries. Take a pub and take a group of chaps, right? Take a policeman and uh, Tim Baldock. Now what happened was that they were planning on doing some extensions to the outside of the, the pub, uh, building a patio or something. So, and somebody went through the local archaeological office and there was a record something buried underneath the, the car park. And it turned out that it was something which this man here, John McRae Jr., or his dad, had discovered back in the 1930s. In the 1930s, the former pub building was near the road and decided to knock it down, make a car park and build a new pub behind. Under the foundations, they found what was an old clinker built, like the Vikings, clinker built wooden ship, or part of it. And the foreman told the workers, put the clay back straight away. We don't want archaeologists and people messing about here and holding things back. That's what happened. It was all forgotten about until John McRae wrote or sketched what he saw and then passed it to his son, John McRae Jr. And it was then passed on to the museums. This is 26 years ago and just left there. Anyway, it all came to light in 2007 when there was a patio application put in and the local history sleuth Tim Baldock, Peace Tim Baldock, got in touch with me. He said, Steve, do you know anything about some, some ship or some possible Viking ship? And the reporter said, no, I didn't know. So I rang up Liverpool Museum. I got made contact with Rob Philpott, who is well, was the co uh, curator there, and he did some searching and found out the plans for this uh, the sketch. And so the next thing we did was to see if it was still down there. And it's always good having a police contact because we got the police's leading ground-penetrating radar man. And so as a team, we got together. It looks like a, a Bex Bissell <coughs> carpet shampoo thing, but it's, it's a bit like a metal detector, but it works on a different principle in the sense that uh, you fire electromagnetic radiation, you know, microwaves or whatever, through the ground, and then you measure the intensity and time required for the signal to get back, and then just scan the ground. So we had to move all the tables and dustbins and things and scan right across the area. So the time it takes to get from where the object is and back again depends on the, the depth, and the intensity depends on the quality or type of material underneath. So you calibrate this instrument with no materials, metal objects, other things, wood as well. And that means you can profile what's underneath the ground. And uh, this is what we got. So you can see the outline of what looks like a ship-like artifact underneath. Now it must be very, very old because it's a distance away from where the seafront is. This is not a Victorian fake. This is a genuine old vessel, which is still down there, but we don't know how old it is. It would cost six million pounds to excavate. The local council will not be giving us that money and neither will English Heritage. But what we can do is go down and sample a piece of wood, get it carbon dated and confirm what the date is. Now, we were originally hoping it would be before 1066, which is the end of the, the Viking Age, what we thought. In England, we're so pleased about the Battle of Logs because the end of the Viking Age now is 1263. Is that right? <laughs> so anything older than 1263 would be absolutely marvellous. So that's the next job, and uh, we're currently uh, sorting out a team to, uh, uh, to do this. With our contacts at the... Uh, ship Museum in Oslo. Uh, I'm sure we can get the thing uh, uh, dated uh, very competently. Right, take another group of chaps. This is down the road at uh, Neston, not far from where that fake coin was found. And in the church of St Mary and St Helen in Neston, which again is a Viking name, are all these marvellous cross fragments that have been smashed up either during the Reformation or during Cromwell, we don't know. So there's at least two or three crosses there in pieces. This one's interesting because it's got the image 
of part of a Viking woman, hers a ponytail here, hers a, a dress, with her arm round what we presume is her husband here, but the rest of it's missing. Now with a grant from English Heritage, I'm working in conjunction with Merseyside Conservation Centre. This is Roger White, who's an archaeologist from Birmingham, who originally did work on the stones 20 years ago. This is Martin Cooper, who runs the Conservation Centre in Liverpool. This is Neil Robb, and this is the church manager, Peter Rossiter. So we all got together, and the Conservation Centre scanned the fragments using a technique known as a laser triangulation. And what you do is you fire a strip of laser light at the object and then you record the intensity, scattered intensity of light on a CCD detector focused by this lens system. So you can map accurately the surface of the object. Actually, this is what they're doing with the objects in Norway now, just in case it goes wrong, you know, with the conservation there. They're scanning all the objects so they could re recreate these objects if we do make a mess of it. So accurate scanning and then reproducing the cross, uh, filling in the missing bit because this lady also appears uh, in uh, in Scandinavia, in, uh, in Gotland, uh, on the Tang Beda stone. Uh, the gentleman appears on the cross at Middleton in North Yorkshire. So we could piece them together again. And then working with local schools, because these would have been painted in the Viking Age, that they would have been, we're not sure what colours, but this is the lady's hair restored. Now, the youngsters <laughs> originally painted the man's hat as red. So someone pointed out it looked like, a bit like Noddy, so that was a uh, change. And also, this was a hat, so we had to restore the lady's uh, hair again. But it's fantastic, and it's on display in the church.